guys, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Who Cares Anyway podcast. I'm your host, Chris Zoman, here on this lovely Friday night. We are live. We are good to go. And this time, we're not going to have any, hopefully we're not going to have any issues. And we got a full crew tonight. All three of us are here. So we're here to just talk about some fun stuff, dive into some movie news, and get into the nitty gritty of what makes man, man, by talking about some just purely dumb action fl- action films. And Ryan, it's your first uh, show back in like two weeks, so you know what, man? How you been? Been pretty good. Busy as all get out, but um, for a good reason, I guess. I'm supposed to be getting smarter. I don't feel smarter. Not yet. But, yeah. Oh, no, and of course, we've got a slight technical issue. One second. There, there we go. There we go. I'm sorry. Of course, I have to screw this up. Every time. Every nah, time. Nah, it's all right. Shit happens, man. You can't control it. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> exactly. We're live. So, yeah. We'll do it live. Fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> oh, boy. That, if that's not a preview for a rant coming later, I don't know what is. But, uh, sorry, Brian, h- how are you tonight? I'm alive and uh, just busy. That's it. They always got me doing stuff. This is just... It all piles up, so that's why I wasn't around last week, but I'm glad to be here this week. I, I did my best to make time, so ready to talk about some blood and guts and some movie news. There we go. And Case, how, how how's your day going, man? How, how have you been? My day's going uh, pretty well. I rewatched some uh, old movies uh, that I haven't seen in a very long time, uh, which I, I saw. Like, you, you know, you have those movies when you are a kid. And you like, and then you watch them again, and you're an adult, and then you don't know if they're either going to be good or bad. In my case, both, yeah, held up pretty well. Uh, one of them was Men in Black, yes. which is yes. an awesome movie. Yes. I love that it. Definitely. Uh, and, I, and I was still able to quote parts of it, um, so I loved it. The other one, uh, yeah, that definitely like not the type of movie you would uh, expect me to like and rewatch. Legally Blonde. To be fair, I watched it with my girlfriend, uh, so uh, yeah, it was more uh, a movie okay. that I, th- hey. I thought, you know what, I'm going to rewatch that with her because that's probably a mo- movie that she – I still really like it. It's still a fun movie. Reese Witherspoon is great in it, I think. Oh, absolutely. Um, so yeah, no, that that was uh, fun to watch. And since then, I've been drinking, uh, reacting to uh, Schmodown now with a certain fellow here. Uh, and just uh, relaxing at home because I have weekend. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've, I've I've got some booze here myself. I, uh, I I started a new job this week, which uh, congratulations. Yes, thank you. So my job search for the moment is over, but I don't know. Given my previous luck, it <laughs> Griffin. God it, only knows. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have a lot of faith, though. It's a really good company, and I I really believe in what they're trying to do. So, you know, because let's face facts. Every everybody. In my opinion, everybody should have affordable insurance that, uh, you know, like I said, A is affordable, B is attainable, and C can cover you in just about any circumstance. So, so if you want to help him out working at this job, just just hit me up. If you live in Minnesota and you're part of a union, you want insurance, (laughs) come find me. I'll I'll, I'll set you up. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Ah, oh, come on. That's all the show is good for, right? Shameless plugs. Hey, we don't, and we don't have a Patreon, so. Not yet. <laughs> Give it time. We'll hey. work on that. <laughs> well, for now. <laughs> Buy insurance, motherfucker. Buy insurance, motherfucker. Now do it. You never know when a dumb action movie might happen right in front of you. <laughs> I say, I say, we just make it into Goodfellas, and it's like you buy the insurance, you pay us off, or else we come to your house and break your legs. Ah, okay. That's why you buy so, the insurance. So, so, so then, Ryan, that would make you Joe Pesci. That would make Case yeah, Robert Romero, and that would uh, make me uh, Ray Liotta. Yeah, but I just want to survive. Yeah, you're end. definitely Ray Li- Ray Liotta. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, that, get the fuck the out. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh Jesus! Uh, oh my God! So, sometimes I wonder why we're friends, but then I'm just like, oh, eh, why not? What am I, a clown? Am I here to amuse you? Yes. Eh? Would you think I'm funny? You think I'm a clown, eh? Yes. <laughs> okay. <sighs> so anyway, so, yes. Uh, 
a lot of crazy oh, shit. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Oh, Can I just please? interrupt you really, really, really quick? Yeah, we don't please. talk a lot of sports, but I just want to say prayers out there for the Red Sox. Game three of the World Series should be starting. Actually, I think it already started. So good luck to the Red Sox. Yes. God bless. If there's any Red Sox fans out there, I'm happy for you. If there's any L.A. Dodgers fans out there, I'm sorry for you. Continue. Thank no, you. you're not. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Nah, LA sucks. <laughs> hey, I mean, um, I like the city well enough, but yeah, their teams traffic, can, man. <laughs> their teams can uh, can can suck it. Their teams can suck a fat one. Cause fuck you, Rams. Oh, Why yeah. are you seven and zero? You should not be seven and zero. How the fuck dare you be seven and zero? Oh my god. Exactly. Cheaters. They're a bunch of fucking cheaters. <laughs> every single one of them. In case it's just like, this ain't Formula One, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I will say this, Chris. Patriots play uh, the Bills on Monday. We're about to get that revenge for the Vikings. Oh, don't worry. You. We got thank you. you we got you, man. <laughs> got it. By the way, you mentioned mm-hmm. Formula One, which you guys probably don't give a shit about. The ah. championship this championship might be decided this weekend on Sunday. Uh, it's very likely. Um, yeah, because the th- the very... Yeah, the the thing right now is that uh, Sebe- Lewis Hamilton is probably probably going to win the world championship because there's three races left, uh, this one included, um, and Sebastian Vettel, his nearest rival, needs to win this race. There's no one in the running anymore. Vettel needs to win the race if H- Hamilton, uh, yeah, and then Hamilton needs to finish a certain place. Otherwise, Hamilton will be championship champion okay. this week. I don't care about that. The Dutch guy, <laughs> the Dutch guy who is competing uh, and who has been running for two years now, might actually win the race. He won oh, last yeah. year. Nice. There you I go. Can yeah. for that. Nice. I can root for him. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. Uh, I mean, the, the, the underdog. The, the Dutch guy won this race last year. It's Mexico, uh, and he might actually win this year because so far in the free practices, he's been way faster than anyone else, and I'd love that. Because, like, at this point, I don't care for Hamilton or Vettel or whatnot because Hamilton is going to be champion anyway. I want the Dutch guy to win <laughs> because no Dutch driver has ever been good in the history of Formula 1 besides this guy, and <laughs> I'm like, come on, just win it already. Yeah, underdog. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, it, it would be like if, uh, you know, if in the World Cup, uh, America finally showed up and oh, could, actually, know, right? could actually hang with the best <laughs> yeah, of, ex- of exactly. football players. That'll and never happen. It'll never happen. Yeah. But if it did ever happen, yeah, I that would. That would be pretty fucking awesome. Because the when year it, is 2275. <laughs> America finally makes it. <laughs> But, and uh, it, it's it's funny that Ryan doesn't even know when world championships take place because seventy five oh, definitely know. not be a yes, year that I it know. will take place. I just pick a fucking year. <laughs> it happens every four years. I know about the world. This is Cup. true, exactly. It's it, yeah. seventy five. It's not even possible. I would be I for Argentina 70, every well, time who knows? because I have maybe, maybe the rules will change there. in a couple of years and they'll make it like every every two years or every three years. Get by the way, Honestly, thank they you. Should, thank if they you for make money. Thank you True. for rooting for Argentina because that's my second favorite country. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, actually, I have some family. Uh, very, very, very distant family, but yeah. Well, oh, nice. I thought. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know, speaking of uh, speaking of some of the shenanigans <laughs> with uh, soccer, I actually watched uh, quite a bit of the coverage this year, and um, there was a there, there was a certain player uh, who was playing for Team Canada. That I was very surprised to see him uh, actually compete. Name of? Uh, name of Mr. Hayden Christensen. Oh, right. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? This one, Anakin this Skywalker is, is a football player. What the fuck am I looking at right now? <laughs> <laughs> is it actually him or is yeah. it someone? Wow! It was, really? it was him. Yeah, it was like actually, it was really him, know. and and like there the, uh, there were a couple of fans who were at the at the game that uh, posted videos, and one of them was like, "Hayden, Hayden, Anakin," and then he looks like, <laughs> "May the force be with you." He's like, "I'm like, oh, that hey, is so cool." Hey, good for like, him. Yeah. All right. Props. I did not. I hate can, Canadians and Canada and all that shit. But. Well, of course I do too because they gave us <laughs> they gave us Celine Dion and Nickelback. I'm not gonna forgive oh, them for that yeah. anytime soon. Come on, fuck yeah. that shit. Ugh. <laughs> I all mean, right, you know, all seriousness, can, it, Canada, but... uh, Canada, I do genuinely love your country. You have a lot of great sites, but simultaneously, fuck you. <laughs> well, I think, can, Chris, you and I can agree, best I thing love... to come out of Canada, rush. Yes. Best to come out of Canada. Oh, so, so good. Yeah, even if just but, for that. By, by the way, about a, about Canada, like what? whenever they're nice to people, 
Whenever they would insult people, they would still be nice to them. Like, I'm sorry I'm going to insult you now, but I'm sorry that I'm going to insult you, so prepare for that. Uh, but I think that you're a shithead. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I love Canadians insulting people. They're always sorry about it. I would say I would say the three of us here would all be the complete opposite. Just be like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, yeah fuck exactly. You. <laughs> Go suck a fat one. And I'm oh. Dutch. I'm not even American. I'm Dutch. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys seem to – if if we go off of the one Dutch person we know, which is Case, you all seem to be assholes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Dutch, Dutch people aren't assholes. I am. <laughs> True. I mean, and plus, like, well, again, and if, let's say you don't know anybody from New England and all you have is Ryan to go off of, then you're just like, well, fuck every one of them. Hey, it's <laughs> the fucking Red Sox, bro. <laughs> See your fucking Drinking Patriots and your fucking it. Boston accents. Hell yeah, we're gonna talk some that movies. Fucking tonight. Cocksuckers. Jeez, cocksuckers. Let's, let's talk some movies. I i I'm, I'm I am boozing up a little bit because I'm in a really good mood today. Yeah. It's been a great I week. Too. Exactly. I'm starting off with a little uh Diet Pepsi and Captain Morgan and have a couple of Coors lights. So let's talk some news. And this is actually a, a pretty interesting one for me. So everybody's been asking, you know, how is Ryan Johnson gonna supposedly bounce back after the divisiveness that was Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi, which yes, case yes, case. Although no rants right now, not no rants no, yet. No, no rants. <laughs> but but a super quick side tangent. I did watch a a uh, a, a review of it the, the other day where a guy actually addressed all of the very legitimate critiques and actually agreed with them for the most part. Which you know what? Hey, fair enough. But then the first thing he did about the shitheads. Called every single one of them out and called a bunch of idiots as you're supposed to do. Yeah. But um, so Ryan Johnson's latest project, Knives Out, has just been building up a fucking powerhouse cast. Like, I'm looking forward to this. And uh, in an interview with Collider, uh, uh, what, or sorry, not an interview, but this is coming from Collider.com. Jamie Lee Curtis is the newest cast member to join along with Daniel Craig. Chris Evans and Michael Shannon. I mean, holy shit! Look at this lineup. You got General Zod with James Bond, with Captain America, and Laurie Strode. Okay, it, it is pathetic that you describe Michael Shannon as uh, Zod because that's <laughs> not one of his best roles. <laughs> but I, but uh, he's going with the superhero, yes. bigger than life. Yeah, yes. I get it. Yeah, you because know, I wasn't about to, I was about to say uh, Roy from Midnight Special, which is one of his best performances, but I couldn't just say that, you mm. know, because that would have made him look really pathetic. And sorry, Case, actually, you are veering a little bit off screen again. Would you mind just moving? Over? Thank you, sir. Appreciate no, it. No, it's face off. You just get half of his face. Ah, what, hey, I might be bringing that one up later. <laughs> but, uh, okay. But no, but speaking of, though, Case, what are your thoughts on, on this cast and Ryan Johnson choosing to do this kind of you know, sort of crime drama thriller as his next follow-up to Last Jedi? Well, what I hear so far from, like, what the movie would be like, and this is really based off just hearing stuff, because not not any footage has been released, just cast and uh, director and what kind of movie. I'm like, this is right up Ryan Johnson's alley. Uh, this is also, like, a, a, an amazing cast that could definitely um, carry... This movie, uh, like Jamie Lee Curtis, look, I might she gives a great performance in it, and I've seen Jamie Lee Curtis in other stuff like True Lies um, and uh, Freaky Friday, and yes. she's great. She heck, she got I think a Golden Globe for uh, either True Lies or Freaky Friday. True Either way, I think, yeah, yeah. But she is great in those movies. She is a great actress in whatever I've seen her in, and uh, like. Whatever she's in, she is a great actress, and I know that she will give a powerhouse performance, and she will do the exact same in this next movie uh, with Ryan Johnson. And then you also have all the other ones. I, I kind of forgot, but like uh, Michael Dan, Shannon, Dana Ma Craig, Michael Shannon, and and Cap. 
Captain America. Yeah, so, like, Chris Evans is a guy who made me care about Captain America. I don't give a shit about the character of Captain America, usually. Like, uh, the character, I think, is, like, Superman, and it's a Boy Scout, I don't give a shit. But what Chris Evans has done in the franchise so far with Cap is amazing, and I love that. Uh, Also, uh, Michael Shannon has been great in essentially everything he's done, except for the one that I just mentioned, General Zod, uh, which is probably one of my least uh, least favorite performances of his, even though I do like Man of Steel, um, Michael Shannon is usually really good. So this cast just shows that there's a lot of talent, uh, a lot of people involved that can really put a, yeah, put on a great performance. And Ryan Johnson, I don't give a shit at what you think about The Last Jedi. I love that movie. I will love it forever. It is amaz- an amazing movie, well-directed, well-written. Uh, and I think that whatever, like I've seen uh, Brick, I've seen Looper, great movies as well. And yeah, this next movie, uh, Knives Out, Knives I think out. it's called. Yep. Yeah, Knives Out. Um, it sounds right up his alley, so I want to see it. Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. A- yeah. As the as the uh, as the <sighs> sort of Ryan Johnson hipster of the panel. Yeah, I try. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Looper is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's amazing. And Ryan Johnson is a generational talent when it comes to writing. I love uh, The Last Jedi, yes. Personally, I feel like that was, it's below some of his other movies in terms of writing. I think it's really, really good, but maybe not as perfect as I think Looper is, because I honestly do think Looper is perfect. The, the, the time, how he handles time in that is incredible. Sorry, back on track. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis She's a great talent. I think she's a little hit or miss, but I think it really depends on who's directing her. Ryan Johnson can direct, okay? Like, come on. This dude can direct. So, I don't care. Yeah, like like Kay said, no matter what you think of The Last Jedi or any of his movies, I mean, he directs actors very well. And, um, I mean, he gets good performances out of Jeff Daniels, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt in multiple movies, Adrian Brody, who I think is oh. also hit or miss. So, I mean... Like, look at Predators, but again, it's well, yeah, Predators. Well, but then again, look so, at the I mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. So, But that's what I'm saying. So you have your kind of hit and miss. Ryan Johnson can handle that. He, he's got this. And I think, too, it wasn't in the story, but Ana de Armas is also going to be in this movie. Yes. Which she kind of came onto the scene with not only Blade Runner 2049, but also War Dogs, which is a movie that I really, really liked, coming from Todd Phillips of Hangover fame. So I think that... Yes. <laughs> oh, this is a pretty big cast of pretty big names that I want to see in a murder mystery because I love murder mysteries. And yeah, Ryan Johnson's the guy to do it. Fuck it. Let him do whatever he wants. Abs- at this point. A- a- absolutely. I mean, Jesus. I. Look, Ryan Johnson has put in the grind since 2005. I mean, Brick is phenomenal. Brothers Bloom, again, in my opinion, is phenomenal. Yes, yes. She's beautiful. Love that go. movie. Great yes. fucking movie. Um, and she's on the cover. <laughs> and she is on the cover, and for good reason. You know, I mean, even though I think that scene with her Gosling and the other chick is a little weird, but simultaneously... It is a, it is a, it is a, a great like, actor, the, the, the concept is probably better than the scene itself, but that's still an amazing scene visually. It is, because it, it's, it's executed well. Yeah. And it's not just the need, but it's also the actors actually committing to it, and yep. they all do. So and plus, she has one of the most heart wrenching scenes in the entire film. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. okay. <laughs> and she's great in War Dogs, which is yes! cool. I think it's great. <laughs> yes. So overall, I think it's safe to say we're all we're all hyped. confident. We're all hyped. I'm ready for this movie. I want a trailer. Come on. Come, yeah, just come give out. us a, give us a trailer to give us an idea what this movie is like because so far. There's not a whole lot of uh, plot, and we can just base on director and cast. Yes. Now, speaking of based on director and cast, here's something that, uh, this is going to sound weird. So, one of the creative minds behind the show Rick and Morty, which you guys are huge fans of. Love it. (laughs) Yes. I, I, love I, 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 I know it by cultural osmosis. I haven't actually watched a full episode, but I oh, know pretty much all about it. 
because I know for a fact that if I ever you know do something successful and make become a millionaire, I will turn into Rick Sanchez. The, the, the thing is, <laughs> if if you've seen a Family Guy episode with Stewie and Brian, you've seen a Ricky Morty and uh, Morty, uh, Morty episode. Way more off the rails and inappropriate. Yes, but yeah. way crazier. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's what's off. Awesome. <laughs> so the man behind this weird ass show. <laughs> is about to get behind another weird ass show, which is based on one of the most innovative sci fi franchises of all time. So, back in 1972, CBS put together an animated show based on their show, Star Trek, which was doing great in syndication. It didn't do so hot in ratings on and when it broadcast for its first three seasons, but because it was doing so well in syndication, they brought it back for animated. Now. CBS All Access is going back to that animation <laughs> form with Mike McMahon from Rick and Morty at the helm to essentially do a comedy show set in the Star Trek universe. And it's not focusing on, like, Kirk, Spock, and all them. This show is about the crews. Like, the red shirts. The people who get no screen time and we pay no attention to. And just sort of go about their lives working on this crazy ship and how they perceive getting into all these crazy adventures. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but if this works, this could be the Orville done right. Because, sorry guys, I wasn't a fan of the Orville. That's because, yes, big shock, I grew up on Star Trek and I fucking love this franchise. And it's kind of like with the MCU... Go, branching off and doing like a new genre film with each film that they keep coming out with. So, I don't know. Like, Ryan, am I crazy for being hopefully optimistic despite not seeing a single full episode of Rick and Morty? I don't think so because I just want to say whoever these execs are at CBS, they got balls. And I respect that because yes. this is a great idea. And I'm someone, so I think we have a good dispersion of, of, knowledge and likes and dislikes on this panel because i'm not big into star trek it just doesn't really do it for me beyond the the popular movies yeah, that have come beyond. out in the last Sorry. decade <laughs> yeah exactly beyond star trek beyond but while he's not the creator of rick and morty and community that's dan Harmon, and he's amazing at everything he does he was still the head writer so he's obviously got a badass sense of humor and i hope that we may not get the exact irreverence that we get with Rick and Morty. They might have to tone it back for CBS. But I appreciate that they that this guy went to CBS and they had the balls to say, you know what, this sounds like a good idea. Let's not take ourselves too seriously. Because from what I've seen, there's some goofy parts of Star Trek. So if you kind of hone in on that goofiness and make it your own and kind of like – Hey, look at us. We're laughing at ourselves, and it's hilarious. And then everyone's like, damn right, it's hilarious. I want to watch this. I'm not a huge Star Trek fan, but I can get on board with this. And that's who I think, like, I'm the type of person that they're trying to bring in. Be like, look, we get it. Star Trek is, there's so much to get into that it's kind of daunting. It's like trying to get into James Bond. You have so many movies, like 50 plus years of movies to get into. It's daunting. Same thing with Star Trek, just about. So it's like, Pretty all much. right, here in here, here you go. It's funny. It's half an hour episodes. You can easily get into it. I'm so on board. Can't wait. And that's fair. Now, Case, as someone who is still discovering stuff like Next Gen, and you know, is a I fan think of I'm the, the movies. I, I think I'm the only person on this panel who has actually seen both. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> Because I've actually seen Rick and Morty, and I've actually seen uh, Star Trek Next Generation and uh, Star Trek Voyager, uh, parts of it. And as someone who's seen both, uh, Star Trek has a lot of goofy, campy, shitty moments. Uh, I mean, I've, I've seen all the movies a couple of times. Um, some of the movies suck. Like, Final Frontier sucks. Insurrection sucks. And there's just a lot of stupid shit that Star Trek has done. Now, granted, I like Star Trek overall. I like the concept. I like most of their movies. I have liked uh, most of their TV show uh, things that I've seen. Um, but having seen Rick and Morty, I'm like, I just want to see what they can do. Like, I want to see what Rick and Morty uh, writers can do with this to make Star Trek as goofy as possible. Because... Rick and Morty is um, like it's very science fiction uh, driven because they do 
like they travel through time to space, uh, all kinds of shit. And it's so funny. It is so well done. And it's extremely well thought out. Like uh, it's like South Park and Family Guy, where on the surface level, it seems extremely dumb. But if you think about it, it's like a lot smarter than you actually think. And that's what I lo- why I love South Park, Family Guy, Rick and Morty, those kind of shows. And I think that for Star Trek, that could work as well, where they on surface level make stupid jokes about Star Trek, which is fun for most people but if you think about some of the stuff there can be some really deep messages some really deep sci-fi concepts that i think they can explore and i think that uh star trek will never explore that themselves uh especially considering that star trek discovery uh, i i haven't seen it but i i haven't heard great things and i'm like and I, i i i'm like you know what just give it a goofy fun uh, spin to make sure that this franchise is fun again and uh, as Ryan already said to make it more accessible to people who don't like Star Trek who are not into Star Trek and will never watch it like if you can make a Rick and Morty type Star Trek there will be a shit ton of people who will actually get into it because they're like hey maybe this is something that I want to get into and that way you can get more people into Star Trek or you can get the hardcore Star Trek nerds who are like really with their glasses and saying, oh, it needs to be like this and it needs to be the Kelvin timeline is absolutely terrible. Exactly. The Scott Mance. <laughs> if you can get those type of people into Rick and Morty, that would also be fun. Like, just loosen the fuck up and watch a fun show because Rick and Morty is fun, you know? Um, so I think this uh, this is a good idea, and I'm excited for it. Yeah, for sure. What was the night? Rick and Morty is fun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And if I can just say one real quick thing. Yeah, please. One, I know a lot of people whose favorite episode of the most recent, yeah, most recent Black Mirror season was the Star Trek kind of <coughs> episode. So there's people out there who don't like Star Trek, but like Star Trek sort of things. One. Two, Rick and Morty has some very dark and dramatic moments. So if they can yeah. carry some of those into that, that have a lot of meaning. If they can carry some of that into this show, you can get your humor juxtaposed with like some actual good drama. Boom, you have a winner. Like I, I can't wait. Abs- a- absolutely, and and you know, uh, speaking of things that might be winners, I want to segue into a-, a trailer dropping yesterday that I'm not gonna lie, it blew my freaking <laughs> mind. Once I read the synopsis, now the trailer itself is not that strong as you only get like a very subtle idea of what the movie's about. But if you read a synopsis for the new film Vox Lux, starring Natalie Portman as this um, as this teenage pop star who apparently, or it's not teenage pop star, but like uh, you know, um, as a, as a pop star with a teenage daughter, and you know, one of the topics it's going to tackle is mass shootings. You know, because uh, I'm blanking on the name of the, of the actress playing her daughter, who also plays Natalie Portman's character in Flashback. Uh, how they're going to tell that story is, uh, like, at, at the turn of the century, you know, um, Natalie Portman's character is, you know, it her she's part of a school shooting, a la sort of like Columbine. And then, you know, now we fa- flash forward to when she became this pop star, and she wants to take a big stance. She wants to take a stance on her her political view of that same situation when it happens again on that caliber. This movie could be really interesting if it's done correctly. I'm just worried that it might not be. Like, Ryan, did you check out this trailer? Are, are you in the same sort of boat as me? or? Yeah, the feeling that I get <clears throat> is like... Um... It looks very visually pleasing, and I like the concept, but I'm just worried that it's going to have, like, miss miss the point isn't the right word, but it's, like, it's just not going to quite get there. It's going to be, like, one of those movies where it's, like, oh, this could have been so great, but, like, the execution just wasn't there. And I kind of, yes, the synopsis sounds really great, but I think the trailer is telling. Now we see bad trailers to good movies all the time. But again, the whole point of the trailer is to sell me on the movie. So based off the trailer, I have to say I'm cautiously optimistic that this could be really good. And I feel that like 
Oscar push, be like, hey, this could be really good, guys. But at the same time, it's like, if it doesn't hit, like, your expectations are so high that it's really just going to let me down. And also, um, I'm just worried, like, I appreciate movies with political stances, but at the same time, like, I can get a political stance from the media but, but, at any but, time. But they should true. come from, I, I would say, a fair perspective. From right. A, yes. uh, from sort of standing your ground where, unfortunately, filmmakers like Michael Moore or Dinesh D'Souza, mm-hmm. yeah. they don't bother with that. They right. They could not they go be bothered the with that anyway. Because all it is for them is just you know a two-hour rant about mm. the system and people. If you're, yeah. And, well, actually, I, and speaking of speaking of, um, sorry, before I send this over to you, Case, real quick, I was listening to Critically Acclaimed this week, and Bibbs and Whitney brought up a film that recently came out about, uh, based on a true story about this uh, serial killer who uh, basically collected fetuses. Oh yeah. And uh, and I blank out what the name of the movie is, um, but it's you know, and but they talked about how. The film was competently made, but very, quote-unquote, disrespectful in regards to the fact of it was so firm, firmly in one place politically that all it was trying to do was just make a point toward yeah. and, and and present it unreasonably. So that's what I'm worried about this Vox Lux, because it looks good. It looks interesting. Case, what are your thoughts on this uh, this trailer? I've only seen the trailer. I didn't read the synopsis, and I only am now hearing about uh, <laughs> from you guys what this movie is kind of about. And like, I didn't really get from the trailer what y- you guys are describing. Uh, to be fair, so I'm like, yeah, trailer in this case is kind of misleading. Like, what what I get from the trailer is that Natalie Portman is gonna put in a killer performance, going for an Oscar, um, yeah, which she's probably. done for Jackie, which is what she's done for black swan and the question is is she going to be as good as black swan if she is as good or better then she might have the oscar uh for this year wrapped up and otherwise well we'll see um the thing is i love natalie portman so i'm definitely going to see this movie um but what you are describing with these um you're describing shootings well, that, that that that's something I definitely have a fucking opinion on as a Dutch person uh, looking out at your country because there's something that I have a massive issue with in your country as a Dutch person, and that is the gun law. And that is like something like uh, Americans uh, – so, some Americans may not realize this, like how bad the gun law is for your country, and some people will completely ignore anything about that. Sure, whatever. I don't care. The thing is, it is a fucking issue, the fact that you have that gun law and that still shootings happen every day. Because, you know, how many shootings have happened here in the Netherlands in the last couple of years? Oh, wait, that's none because we don't have a uh, don't have a law that uh, allows guns as freely as you guys have. Simply. Yes, I have a strong opinion about this because. And and you want something? I think one day I'm going to want to get into this. Yeah, we not, probably not right have to now. get into this one, one day, you know. Uh, but, the, but the thing is, sometime. like, if if the if the movie can actually accurately portray that and accurately portray that America is not doing well with the law, uh, with the gun law, and the fact that everyone is uh, essentially everyone is allowed to have guns, uh, then I might like this movie. But it really depends how it uh, handles that subject matter. Because in my case, I'm like, yeah, I have a certain opinion about it. I have a very strong opinion about it. And I just want to see how this movie deals with it. And it depends on how the movie deals with it. So, uh, judgment out on this movie. I think it could be good. I, I'd i love to see Natalie Portman give a great performance. But we'll see. Yeah, and... <laughs> Actually, and, and, and it's funny that you you, you brought up uh, the idea of sticking to sticking to subject material, which you know, is, again, if if this movie's gonna try to, you know, stay true to what it's trying to root itself in, then that means I'm fucking scared for what uh, this latest adaptation of a classic Italian novel is gonna <laughs> be like. So, 
the last time that Roberto Benini and Pinocchio teamed up, <laughs> it was a disaster. It was an outright fucking unmitigated, unforgivable disaster. This is one of the this is the filmmaker who brought us one of the best films of the '90s, Life Is Beautiful, and then gave us one of the most. Ah, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, JT. Thank you, JT. And hey, get well soon, bro. We love you. Uh, okay, so Roberto Benigni is set to star in a in another live action remake of Pinocchio. This time, thank God, he's not playing the title character. This time, he's playing Geppetto and being directed by apparently one of the hottest Italian filmmakers of the last decade, uh, Matteo Gerano, or Gerone. My apologies. My apologies. <laughs> Matteo Gerone. <laughs> and based on everything I've heard so far, including that uh, the film will blend prosthetic effects and CGI, combining with people who worked on stuff like Grand Budapest Hotel, Iron Lady, Revenant, Cloud Atlas, all, in my opinion, visually striking films. S- I'm 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 just hoping that they get it right, but case as someone who probably doesn't really care for much of much of these much of this like do you have any thoughts on it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. <laughs> wow, case is surprisingly tacit. I'm shocked. Ha! <laughs> Funny, but Ryan, you you seem to perk up at a couple of those. I mean, look. I don't really give a shit about Pinocchio, if that's the right terminology. Um, I think it like it's okay, but I never cared that much growing up for the Disney adaptation, and I've never seen any other adaptation any other way. But May God look, bless you, you for that. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I, I have seen even just the poster though, and it looks cheesy as fuck just from the poster. So I mean, there's that. You have a good actor, step one. You have a good director. Maybe that's step one, but basically step one, step two. Good actor, good director. You're off to a good start, right? Step three, blending prosthetic and visual. That's intriguing, and that that actually is what perks up my ears because I'm like, okay, they're, they're looking to make something interesting and like actually put the time and effort into making it good. I'm not going to necessarily rush out to see this in theaters, I don't think. But if you're going to make Pinocchio, you might as well make it, one, new. So, you know, CGI and that they didn't have in 2002. And two, make it well. That way people actually can get some enjoyment out of it. So if you do those two things, then yes, I will go watch your movie. But as of right now, I don't give that much of a fuck. So I guess we'll see. And you, what you about what? you, Chris? I, well, to, to to close the close this 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 story out, I, I'm I'm just gonna say this. Um, uh, I've yes, Pinocchio is one of my favorite movies of all time. Like it scarred me as a kid, and in some ways, it still scars me as an adult because some of the imagery that's used, especially, like, during the Pleasure Island sequence and w- all this sh- the shit with the donkeys, like, it's it's genuinely creepy. B- so, and from having actually read the original book, I, I think this might be the version of the film that actually goes more towards the original book and away <laughs> from the the Disney adaptation, which Benini tried to do in 2002. Essentially, he wanted to do a live-action version of the 2002 film, but make a point, and he failed epically at it. So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be hopeful. I will reserve all judgment until I see a trailer, until I see the film. But you know what? I'm actually looking forward to it. And, staying on the but now on the course of films we're actually looking forward to. So, uh, Infinity War was a big film, right? Nah. No one really likes nah. it. I mean, we all know the characters are going to come back, right? That's actually... You want to yeah. fucking rant. I, I mean, I... Rant. I, I oh, no, please, I, I Ryan, come on. Come on, Ryan. Hit me with what you got. What you got? 
look, okay, everyone wants to rant about Star Wars. I'm a little worn out from the rants on Star Wars. I agree with all of them, but I'm worn out. Here's the rant that really matters that no one's doing that I've seen is everyone that wants to say that DC's better or Marvel isn't as good or Infinity War doesn't matter is because, well, all the characters, we all know they're going to come back because it's Marvel and they can't keep anybody dead. Have you, one, read a fucking comic book? Have you, two, do you know anything about anything? And three, it's a movie that you know has a sequel. So, yes, some people are going to come back because they have to. Because they have to kill Thanos. It's the whole purpose. Oh, but But Thanos killed half of everyone. And two, we knew Spider-Man was going to come back for fucking years. We already knew that there was going to be a sequel. Hell, they, they, they just wrapped filming on his sequel. Like, I just, do not yeah. I just do not understand this thing. Like, Infinity War sucks only because we know the characters are going to come back. Yes, we know that the majority, if not all, of the characters. I think Loki and possibly Gamora will not be coming back. And um, Heimdall. I don't think we're going to see them again. But you never know. Why? Because it's a comic book film. If, if we can go from... Uh, all sorts of different Batmans and Supermans and blah, blah, like Henry Cavill's gone, Ben Affleck's gone. There can't be no more Batmans because they got rid of Ben Affleck. There's no more Batmans. That's the only one. No, you make another fucking Batman because there's by more the, than one. By the way, they, ju- they just what? announced Batman for that Joker movie that Walking Phoenix is starring in. So. Exactly. <laughs> there can't be no more Jokers. There's the only one, two, three, four, five Jokers. Just the only ones. Shut the fuck up. I hate you all. You're stupid. <laughs> it's a comic book film. Gosh. This, this idiot. Is cla- this is a classic Ryan rant. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you. Uh, if, Ryan, if you I fucking missed you. <laughs> <laughs> top, top three rants right there for <laughs> Ryan McClellan. <laughs> Wonderful. So, going back to my original point, um, actually, since we're off the rails, hold on. I, I want to address something. Uh, Jonathan Packey asked me, um, what are our thoughts on the George Miller's follow-up to Man Makes Fury Road, 3,000 Years of Longing? Um, look, it sounds like an interesting concept of, uh, I think it, it's Idris Elba and Tilda Swinton. There, it, It's kind of like an epic romance kind of film, but we have really no idea about the, we have no details about the plot we have no ideas, details on who else is in it or anything along those lines. And granted, it sounds good. It's a George Romero film, you said? Oh, or, sorry. Uh, George Miller. My apologies. George Miller. Yeah. I, I couldn't remember what you said, so that's my yeah, own and To be fair, I've been drinking, so I, <laughs> yeah, probably, exactly. I probably could have you know, mixed it up. But, uh, hey, <laughs> okay. we're live. <laughs> I mean, just, just, just based off of those three names, though, I've heard nothing except for those three names. Boom. I'm interested. Yeah, like you no, said, we same. know nothing, but those three names – that gets me going. Like I'm like, all right, let's see it. Yeah, no, this, this, this sounds interesting. But that's neither here nor there because the story I was trying to set up with the Infinity War thing uh, before Ryan just gave us gloriousness. Uh, so Avengers 4 is going to do something that we haven't seen too much in the MCU, and that is bring in flashbacks. And we know this because one of the actors whose character is long dead is in the movie and he straight up talked about it. Thank you, Frank Grillo. (laughs) You are never going to work for Disney again, but thank you for your service (laughs) to provide us this news. Uh, And apparently in said flashbacks, uh, his character crossbones is going to be alive and well, and we'll see a relief. We'll probably see him for only a short bit, but I don't know. Does, does this surprise anybody that, uh, Avengers 4 will have an element of flashbacks to it? No. Why would it surprise anyone? Seriously. Like, any mo- have you seen any movie ever? If you've seen, like, <laughs> seriously, mo- most movies... No. If seen, <laughs> like, if, you, if, you've seen, if you've seen any movie ever, yeah. or most movies at least, will oh. use flashbacks at one point to remind you of stuff that has happened, or maybe show more stuff that hasn't been revealed yet. Like, the thing is, uh, I've been reaching, 
I've been watching the Saw movies recently. Saw uses it all the time. Saw does it all the time. Like, hey, remember when this happened? Well, actually, this and this was happening. That might be something that you might want to know right now because it involves the stuff that you're seeing right now. That's just simply how it's going to go in Avengers 4. Hey, you remember when Crossbones was actually a thing in this universe? Well, this is how he has influenced things in this universe uh, back when Civil War and when a soldier were a thing you know uh, and it's going to influence the next movie and it's going to influence this moment that you're seeing right now so they're gonna it's like it's not the newest fucking thing in the universe I mean yes yeah, Star Wars doesn't really do it except for Star Wars actually does do it so what about James Bond seriously every franchise every movie ever as I said if you've seen any fucking movie ever <laughs> no. you've seen a fucking flashback no a- that's not how that works you just just proved your own thing because if I watch uh, Pinocchio 2002, am I going to see flashbacks in that? Yes. Okay, so there's one. <laughs> what about if I see uh, The Lion King, am I going to see flashbacks in that? No. What if I see The Iron Giant, am I going to see flashbacks in that? Okay, okay, I don't know okay, why. I didn't okay. Okay. Technically, it might, you do. Okay. Technically, okay. you do in Lion King. Okay, it, it, it might not be every movie ever. Right, but that's but what I'm saying. So you like, can't just say every movie but, ever. But if se- it's not se- every seriously, movie ever, seriously, <laughs> if you're a, oh, you see tits in every movie ever because it's in some well, of them. I mean, hey, if if, if <laughs> shirtless dudes counts as seeing tits, then yes. But but every movie seriously, a- flashbacks are in so many but movies. Like- so, <laughs> like, I think that every person in this world has seen a flashback in yes, any that- ca- type of yes. movie or TV show. So, like, what what is the big deal? What is the big deal if there being flashbacks in Avengers 4? Why are we even making this a big deal? Let me tell you why it's a big deal. Because Frank Grillo's coming back. Nobody I think. Oh my fucking God, Frank Grillo! <laughs> 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 you had your turn. Uh, Shut up. I, I know. And yes, some some people acted like it, it's a big fucking. I mean, and granted, you know, I sure I like I like Crossbones. Yeah, I think he's a cool, you know, side henchman villain. It's, and if thinking nothing. like, why is he coming back? I'm fine with him coming back because Frank Grillo's great. And to yeah. be honest, I don't think he can make a living off of just the Purge movies. So he's got to do other stuff. <laughs> but do we know, like, I mean, that kind of gets you thinking, like, okay, out of all the flashbacks, if you said Tom Hiddleston said there's going to be a flashback, I'd be like, oh, of course, yeah, sure. If you said uh, Zoe Saldana said there's going to be a flashback, like, gotcha. But you said. say Frank Grillo, now I'm like, hmm. Hmm, Cross we'll him for a while. A very minor character in the grand scheme of things. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Why are they bringing him back? Do I want him to come back? Of course. It's Frank Grillo. It's Crossbones. He's a cool character that really got barely any screen time. But it makes you wonder why is he in a flashback? It's not that I don't want to see it. It's just I want to know why. I want to know. I and, want and this you movie. Know and, and, and yes, now, now, I have cancer. I need to see it right now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is 100% fair. I don't blame you. It, 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 yes, like, no, you, if it, it would be like if they did, um, well, okay, never mind. I was about to give up a bad example using Solo, so never mind. Not going to go no, there. No, you said no. brought Darth Maul back. <laughs> <sighs> God. Okay. Okay. Fine. That fine. Was... Fine. I'm just. Gonna, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna move on awesome. to the next story because I. Yep. Nope. I. Amelia I... Clark, best actress. Case. What do you think? Case. What do you think? Oh, uh, what? <laughs> no. Never mind. Move on. Mi- nope. I mi- nope. I Before he gets I'm, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. So speaking of uh, Star Wars, though. Apparently, not everything is quite hunky dory on the set of The Mandalorian. Nor is everything hunky-dory for the Boba Fett movie, which Lucasfilm has now officially announced. It is done, scrapped, moving on. Thank Thanks God. I, I just wanted to get that out of the way real quick because Case actually brought it up. Um, yeah, it, it, it really was brought up like a half an hour before we started the show. Like, oh, this is the thing. Yeah, and who cares? <laughs> so... <laughs> um, no. But no, but now to the story that I actually am a little like, like, really? And apparently, um, so the Mandalorian set did have some, some things stolen from it. It was mostly props 
but there were a couple of hard drives that did contain some pretty sensitive information in regards to scripts and characters. And first off, why? Why would you do this, Randy? What a Asper? fucking asshole did this. Really? I mean, do you have to ruin this for everybody? Don't do that. Don't be that guy. Why, you think you're cool? You think you can just, like, just buy it and steal it for ransom? You think you're better than me? <laughs> exactly. Fuck you. <laughs> but, I don't know. A am I just, am I, am, I, am I overthinking this? Am I looking too much into this, Ryan, or, you know? Yes, Ryan. I, d I did call um, on you. Either A, someone's been watching fanboys too many times. Or B, <laughs> Quentin Tarantino's friend that leaked his Hateful Eight script is on the scene again. I think it could be both. Maybe it's the same person. One of the same. All I and know is... Conspiracy theory right here. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> here, here's my thing. I love stealing things. Just kidding, I don't. But if you were to steal something, why would you steal something that ruins it for the rest of America? And, and, you know, sure, the Netherlands, whatever, other countries that uh, aren't as free. Um, <laughs> you know, <sighs> some of us just want to watch a, a TV show. Is that so much to ask? Like, fuck, please, just be a good human being for once. Is it that hard? I really don't think it is. I mean, I own multiple guns. And a car, and and I, I I can steal stuff too, but I never do. Because Just you have don't... common sense. Yeah, and and integrity, and you know, like common decency. Uh, so please and, don't steal. And, and, I just want to see wanna a make, show. You want to make sure that you don't get involved with the law, like the police and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> because cause apparently the police are after this mofo. Like he is done. Oh, or yeah. she. Or she. Come on now, guys. Let's no, 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 no. Uh, don't assume it's gender. <laughs> it, you said he or she. You it, are it, assuming it, a gender. You cannot do this. <laughs> it is an online show. Banned from YouTube. You just got you banned. You are banned from the internet from now on. <laughs> you cannot assume a gender. Yeah. Ooh. What do you Ooh. think about this? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh. Also, did you see that Nicolas Cage is on the loose? Because someone tried to steal the Magna Carta in the UK. Ah. And, well so done, sir. Everything. Well done. Yes, yes, yes. But no, honestly, let me just finish it out. To be serious, I'll be serious, I swear. Yeah. Honestly, it's just like, what the fuck, dude? Like, do you really have to do this? Like, you, you could have waited a little bit and seen it with the rest of the you. fucking world. Was, isn't that hard? Like, who are you going to sell it to? Genuinely, genuinely, who's going to buy? No one's going to touch that because no. Lucasfilm and Disney are going to ruin you. I was going to say something worse, but they will fuck you over. Oh yeah, I mean, and and sure, if if I was a millionaire and I was you know wanted to be a spoiled brat, yeah, I'd be like, hey, I'll I'll buy it from you, but because you know yeah, maybe but... I want to work there someday. No, <laughs> I want yeah. nothing to do with that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah case. Oh, Sorry, you, 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 you were trying to say something. <sighs> yeah, like, uh, who, who, whoever it might be, I'm not trying to assume it's gender, because that's way too sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> pointing fingers! I, I'm, I'm not saying he, she, them, it, whatever. It's like, wh whoever it might happen to be, uh, oh, you're a piece of fucking shit! Fuck you! Why the fuck do you do this? I Like, Seriously, they're trying to make a fucking Star Wars show. Like, uh, th th this just goes back to the uh, to the argument we like something that we brought up on the, our very first show, and that we shouldn't bring up until we actually talk about it. Fucking Star Wars fans or Star Wars haters, either one. Star Wars fans or Star Wars haters, um, so they they blur these days. They really blur these days. They were the worst fucking Sometimes. pieces of shit in this world. They are the most toxic horse shit fucking people in this world who will try to destroy every fucking thing that you like about a certain fucking franchise just because they dislike one motherfucking character in I one motherfucking it. episode of yeah. fucking Rebels just because they don't like it. They will try to ruin every fucking thing for you. It's like, fuck you, you're a horseshit person and you should just fucking get rid of... 
get get out of this fucking picture. Just don't steal from the man. Like they're making a fucking TV show for I don't know how many millions of dollars to make us happy. At least to make 100, Star Wars hundred million dollars. To, At least hundred sure, million. To make Star Wars fans like Ryan, Chris, myself, or whoever is out there happy. To my make brothers, sure my sisters. <laughs> no, but seriously, that there are people out there who still like Star Wars. You might be shocked by that because by now uh, everything has been done to ruin Star Wars. I know, but fuck you and your fucking opinion. There are still people out there who like Star Wars and who want to see the show and don't want to see the fucking set route. So fuck you for being a shitty person, and I hate you. And that's all I have to say about that. I just want to say he's at home or it is at home right now watching this. Is like, oh my god, they are at home. <laughs> They are at home. <laughs> the, the thing is, they are at home and they're like, Ryan is assuming my gender. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Oof. <sighs> well, you know what? I... I'm i sorry if you tuned into this show. Like, Oh, no, please. Like, seriously. Like, I mean, as, as the cool guy in the chat said earlier, the rants on this show are, are glorious and... <laughs> <laughs> Come for the movie news, stay for the rants. Exactly. <laughs> that's that, that's the fucking point of this show. Now, <sighs> speaking of rants, yeah, Chris, this is your time to shine because you're probably gonna say some stuff that I don't agree with, and Case won't be able to have an opinion on because he's not American. So go for it, <laughs> ladies, gentlemen, uh, people of non-binary gender. <laughs> I. I want to. I, I want to start this off by making something. There, there. I, 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 I want to make something perfectly fucking clear. I do not identify as a Republican or Democrat. I identify as a person of common fucking sense. I vote for the person that I personally most agree with, and the person that I think will most that will do the best for my country or my state or my county, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, it was reported earlier this week that several major figures of the Democratic Party, including the governor of New York, the mayor of New York City, Barack Obama, the Clintons, CNN themselves, all received mysterious packages that happened to contain live pipe bombs. And if, if you live in America, you can't escape this news right now. Actually, and no, since that, then, and, and actually, NBC, NBC, I'm pretty sure, was the other news source. And then also Robert De Niro were the yes, other Yes, and Robert De Niro was also sent a, a, a pipe bomb package. Yeah. What the actual fuck is wrong with... And, 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 okay, right. and they caught the guy today, too, by the way. I just want to say, yes. they did find the guy. He they, was they finally, in, like, they, they the finally caught the son of a bitch that did it. They yeah. finally caught him. And guess what? Was he a foreign He's terrorist? No! Of course not. But what? What? And Ryan, listen, I will thank you for oh, your service. Good, yeah. But I want to make it perfectly fucking clear right now to our dear president in the White House. Fuck you because you did uh, not address this situation as a president should. You did the same fucking thing in Charlottesville. You've done the same fucking thing for every mass shooting in the country. Address this like a president should. You overgrown, overblown, orange-haired piece of shit. Now, of course, the right-wing media is trying to take, is trying to uh, avoid this story at all costs. Because, well, let's face facts. The son of a bitch who did all this leans very heavily to the right. Now, I have no official qualm with the Republican Party. I have no official qualm with the, Dem with the Democratic Party. Uh, they, both have, they both have certain parts of their philosophy that I agree with and that I don't. However, just for once in an election season, can we actually be fucking decent people to each other? Can we actually learn to get the fuck along? Can we actually learn to quit it with this nonsense of literally trying to kill each other just for a seat in a fucking white building for our Congress? No, I think that's too much to ask out of our dear, overpaid, Jackass politicians who are just in it for the money, and you all fucking know it. <sighs> okay. 
Sorry. I had to get huh? on the soapbox. Yeah. It's been bugging me all week. It's. We all had our rant. Yes. And I. Uh... I mean, the thing with it is, is like, it's always the crazy people. So it's like, it's, it's the far left and the far right. Because I mean, it wasn't more than what it was like a year and a half ago that someone who was a Bernie Sanders supporter showed up to the congressional baseball practice, baseball game practice. And, you know almost killed Steve Scalise and yeah, shot multiple and, and, other and, 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 Republican and shot, congressmen. And shot several senators, which is completely right. fucking inexcusable. So you, I think the issue is, is because it is like what you were saying. It's so far to the left, so far to the right. The people that are the most vocal are, it's, it's always the negative stuff that gets the most attention in the news, whether left or right. And it's always the most crazy people, whether left or right, that get the attention. So I think that, Obviously, well, not obviously, I don't know. I voted for Trump partially because of my job, partially because Hillary Clinton, to me, is the worst um, presidential candidate in the history of ever because the Democrats, or I should say the liberals, picked a bad person to go to bat for them. That's how I see it. And and I don't think she could ever win. She's no, too and, and let's be shaky. real here. Despite her experience as Secretary of State, despite her, you know, first lady experience for eight years, I, I hate to say it, but she wouldn't have been a great candidate, a, a great president either. She, she makes a lot of excuses Trump's for her though. husband too, who did some pretty horrible things while he was in office. So, but that's yes. the thing is, it's the pointing fingers thing she that would frustrates have been me. Than so, Trump, though. well, yeah, and, and, well. That's debatable. That's debatable <laughs> with with the with the. You don't know because because you don't know, no, I, 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 I know I know that for a fact. And that's like saying. Well, that's and, like, no, no, no. Here, here's the thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But here, here's the thing. The rest of the world thinks that. I was that, in the middle, of a, okay. like I was in the yes. middle of a sentence. But Sorry. saying that Hillary Clinton would have been a good president is like saying Josh Trank would have made a good Boba Fett movie. You have no clue because it never happened and it never will. So you have no idea. You can and, say she would be better because you agree with her views, and that's fine. But in all actuality, you have no idea. You don't know. Exactly. And, and, and we're all going to disagree here. You two will agree with each other, which is fine, because you're more on the liberal side of things. And I will agree with myself, because I stand alone <laughs> as the current conservative who owns at least nine guns that are all sitting very safe inside a safe, and no one can touch them besides myself. And I only use them when I want to and, shoot paper targets and because, or steel targets. And, and you're responsible about it. And I am responsible about it. And I have the, deployed to Iraq, and I do shoot things for a job. And I it is my job to know how to kill people, and that is how it is. But exactly. And, 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 aside, and I can never all, fault you for that. Right. And all this aside, here's what we all know, and here's what we can agree on. People do need to calm down. The president is not perfect. In any way, shape, or form, he has done some good things, like the economy is booming, and he has done some bad things, like he acts like a child. So it goes both ways, and it's the same yes. thing with Hillary Clinton, and it's the same thing with everything. We all need to take a step back, because there's Antifa, too. There's Antifa in Portland, Oregon, that's directing people on the streets and saying, you can't come to this side of town. What the fuck is that? You it's, can't come to this side of town? It, it, it's, Bitch, completely, it, it's completely asinine. Yeah, exactly. So everybody needs to take a step back and realize we all, this is our country. We all need to come together and allow each other to live comfortably in this country. Okay? Because there's nowhere else. I'm sorry, Case. I know you probably have a lot of pride for your country, and you should, because as Theodore Roosevelt said, I I actually don't. said, any man who does not have pride for his country has no right being a man at all. I'm paraphrasing. But it's something along those lines. So if you don't respect and have pride in your own country, you're worthless. So I have pride in my country. This is my country. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to stupid Canada or Britain or Scotland, even though Scotland's amazing, or anywhere else. Because this is my country and I will be here till I die because it matters to me. So here is my solution along agreeing with what Chris said. Get your head out of your ass. Okay, Pretty people? Much. I don't care Please. how much you president obama or whatever to, to be honest i think he's the worst president ever but i never sent a bomb to his fucking he used to be my commander-in-chief like you don't send a bomb to someone no like retarded. No, and robert de niro no matter what hit, i mean the guy's a great actor 
And, and, and that's one of my favorite actors of all time. So yeah, yeah I got a little upset when 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 I read that he was yeah. on the on the list of targets. It's like, okay, it's a human being. Like you don't do that to other human beings. You don't shoot human beings at a congressional baseball game. You don't shoot or uh, send bombs to human beings. You don't bomb human beings in schools in Oklahoma. You don't. And he was a a former army sapper. So like. Like, there's all sorts of different people that have so many crazy ideals that do all sorts of stupid things. We need to stop blaming each other, which both the left and the right do, because the left is going crazy with this as much as the right is. We need to come together and realize that, hey, we're going to disagree all the time, but we need to be normal about it. And and guess what? There is a way to coexist in disagreeing. In fact, there's a way to improve by disagreeing. Because Mm -hmm. here— and I are able to be friends. Exactly. I mean, shit. And all three of us are friends, and we all, you know, have various various opinions about the stuff that we love. For example, you know, and Star Wars. Star Wars <laughs> is this thing that links us all Star together. Wars, I was pretty sent back. I love you, George Lucas. <laughs> kind of, because guess what, motherfuckers? I love the prequels. I fucking love the prequels. But Ryan, you've gone on record several times saying you genuinely hate them. Mm-hmm. And I respect your opinion for that. You're allowed to think that. Case, you have said it once, you'll say it again. Attack of the Clones is your most hated film of all time. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. And I respect <laughs> that opinion because, you know what? I'm straight up said it's a bad film, but I still love it. Because I have nostalgia, rose-tinted goggles, and, I've, and I'm too forgiving of those films. But does that, does that make any of us bad people? Oh. No. It means that we all, no, we, we at least at least three of us, on this particular topic, we have common sense, and we're able to use it to better ourselves and to better the world around us. So please, guys, a, please go out and vote November sixth. For those of you in America, I don't ever ask anything of our fans, but for the love of God, go out and vote. And let's go out and vote. Be, let's make our voices be, heard. Be decent people. I don't I mean, continue there, the rest of that song for a purpose, <laughs> for a reason. No, because the, the rest of that flag. song would be. We and let's fade in an American, American flag, flag, Dutch flag. Can we do that, Chris? Can you do that um, off the bat? I don't think you can. But um, yeah. and, and like, here's the thing: is like, this is how I think of it. Is like, one, there are so many people over two hundred and. Wow, I really should know how long America's been around, but it's like 240 something years. There are people that have died for your right to vote. Literally everybody ever in this country can vote if you're over the age of 18. And and like use that. Please. Please. Use that. Okay? Because I've used it to my advantage and, and other people have used it and you have to. Like, I honestly I say if you don't vote, you do not have a right to complain about what the fuck is going on in politics. And everyone that oh, exactly. well, I'm still an American, like, pfft, bitch. Yeah, I don't no, know you're not. Go, 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 so go, go, go back to spitting right. in your <laughs> spittoon there. Yeah, uh, exactly. fucking... but, but by the way, there will be an episode that we talk about politics and that I will try to explain the Dutch uh, politics system. Oh, which and, is and I cannot wait. <laughs> I, I, actually, to be honest, case, I genuinely can't wait to hear this. Like, I, I'm excited. The thing to hear is, about it's, well, it, it's like really, really happy. <laughs> um, and if, and if it's possible, Case, like, if there's any way for you to, like, get a hold of a Dutch politician so we can get into that, dude, I'm mm-hmm. serious. I, I genuinely want to have that conversation. But we'll see after that. I think we're done with, po- I think we're done with political talk. I think we're done with that. Uh, fuck politics. Let's I just switch think... our brains off, drink some beers, and <laughs> – I didn't exactly. think that was a good segment, though. I mean, no, that, that, what, that was that, that was great, yeah. and yeah. dude, I feel good about that. Me as well. Like seriously, Ryan, I, I'm giving you a hug across my screen yes. because you want to know what we did. We talked out our, our we yes. talked out our, our philosophies like yeah. men. Hey, I'm part of things too. Like yeah. men. <laughs> exactly. Come here. Come here. <laughs> so. John Wayne sheds a single tear in heaven for the, all of us. There we go. Amen to the Duke. So, tonight, we're here to talk about, we're going to finish out the show for the next, uh, however long it takes, talking about something that we all enjoy, 
That is dumb action movies. We are we all... testosterone. Exactly. And now it's like, sure, we were just talking about, you know, don't send pipe bombs and whatnot, but now we're going to talk about shit blowing up. We're going to talk about guns getting fired off and people dying left and right. It's, it's and the women an are hot. And there's just so much. It Like, this is gun porn at its best. Yeah. So, Case... I, I initially had a separate idea for this show, but then you pitched this to me, and I said, well, okay. Would you mind? Chase has some good ideas. Would, the, would, the would you thing, mind telling us why we, we, we're doing this? The, the thing is, uh, I was uh, you, you had an idea for something involving Johnny English, English 3, uh, a franchise that nobody has ever given a shit about. Uh, and like look, no, no, no. Look, look I, I like the first Johnny English as – not good as it is um but the thing is like that movie is just not a movie that people are gonna see and i i saw a shit ton of interest in this little fucking movie called hunter killer and i saw the trailer to it and i saw the reviews for it and i saw the stars for it and i'm like this is the dumbest fucking action movie that's gonna release this year. It stars fucking Gerard Butler. It has like 30% of Rotten Tomatoes. The trailer looks like it is a stupid shit action movie. But you know what? You're gonna pop. Uh, you're gonna uh, put some popcorn in your face. You're gonna uh, drink some beers while uh, while watching it, and you're in, you're gonna enjoy the shit out of it because you know that's sometimes what men like to do. Because man. I want to watch Man. a fucking action movie. I want to watch some guns blow up. I want to do. I want to see fucking beautiful girls, man. Just that kind of shit. That's the, that's the type of movie that you're going to get with fucking Hunter Killer. Because Gerard Butler stars in it. It has 30% on Rotten Tomatoes. And the trailer looks like it's a Ass. stupid fucking movie. <laughs> it looks so bad. But you're going to enjoy the fuck out of it. That's why. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And... Yeah, I'm like, you know what? Okay, as much as I want to talk about spoof franchises, because I have my thoughts on them, but I don't. <laughs> but, but it's a dying just, breed. It is it's a dying, dying breed, breed and yeah. yes. my opinion. Thank God for that. But uh -huh. maybe, maybe on this some is... Friday night <laughs> when Case can't join Ryan and I, that might be a fun yeah. topic for just the two of us. Yeah, and that's like you can do it any week, to be honest. Exactly, exactly. We can do that any week we want, but <laughs> and plus. We th there's so many more dumb action films. I'm just I'm fucking I'm just call it right now. This is part one <laughs> because I I'm gonna have a ton more. So so let me about. hear the rules actually. So is that we we're doing one each or just like kind of spew uh, so, a couple or how do what, you want to do this? What I actually want to do is um because I want to keep the show a little shorter tonight. We're gonna do three apiece with two honorable mentions. So technically this is a top five. Technically. With not a whole long spiel for each, like exactly, exactly, yeah. not a whole long, stupid long spiel, but for like a couple of them, you can really get into it. Yeah. So, yeah. Ryan, would you mind starting us off with one uh -huh. of your honorable mentions? Just something. Honorable off top mention. Of um. <coughs> here's the thing: is like I don't always watch a lot of uh, dumb action movies, but, and I don't even know like. I'm probably going to get a lot of people complaining that this isn't really an action movie and this isn't really dumb or whatever, but I feel like I feel like kind of an outsider because everyone likes National Treasure, but I'm not sure that ah, everyone likes National no, Treasure that, too. That, that counts. That is and a dumb I action really movie like, ever there was. I really like National Treasure too. okay? I'm no, sorry no, to no, all the oh, people oh, out oh, there. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I love that movie. It's yeah. fun. Like... It's not the best movie ever. It's really cliched, and it's essentially a repeat of the first. Mm. But if it doesn't work, I'll be a monkey's uncle because Ed Harris kills it somehow. I mean, Ed yes. Harris kills it in everything. But I don't know. It's just so good. Like, it's so interesting to me, and I just love it. And there's a, a car chase, and there's people falling to their deaths, and there's people getting crushed, and, like, you never really see any blood, so yeah, okay, sure. It's not like super gory and Plus, manly, whatever. But like, I mean, and actually, and sorry to build off your point for just oh, two yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most underrated film president of all time, Bruce yeah. Greenwood. Bruce Get Greenwood. that man in the office. Yeah, <laughs> that was so awesome with like, oh, just like the underground tunnel, and there's just so many. And like, my my uh, brothers and sister, Will and I, we'll, we'll all just like we'll start doing this thing where we're like. 
Um, like we'll be like, oh, I'm looking for a pen, pen, iron pen, jail, people in jail, uh, tall people, short people. Oh, the Statue of Liberty. Like we'll just pull a Nicolas Cage where we just rip something out of our ass off of magically. Like there's just so many great things about that movie. It's National Treasure 2. And and please, will they just ever make National Treasure 3? Please? Like you teased us. I like, want to know what's like, on like, page. Like, like while we still have John Voight and Helen Mirren around, please. Uh, yes, and while Nicolas Cage still has hair, come on, get on it. <laughs> so yeah, that's my first. Oh my God, yes, and, that, and that's a hundred percent a fair point. Uh, case. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, there are a couple of thing, a couple of movies that I want to say for. Later, uh, for my well, no, actual talk. Well, yeah, but like, just give me an honorable oh. mention. Like, what's something that? Yeah, uh... okay, an honorable mention uh, that I would say. It it seems that people that there are plenty of people who don't like these movies and who think they're stupid action movies because it's just Guy Ritchie doing whatever he whatever the fuck he wants. Like, I love Guy Ritchie. I love his directing style, and I think that uh, both the Sherlock Holmes movies that he's done are great enjoyable action flicks they're stupid they're they're not that they're not that great or anything they're uh kind of stupid at points but you know what i love the guy ritchie uh sherlock holmes movies both of them uh the 2009 and 2011 one i think that robert downey jr like he um it's not sherlock holmes but it's Robert Downey Jr.'s version of Guy Ritchie's directed Sherlock Holmes, which works extremely well for that movie. And it's awesome. And if you drink to it, these movies are fucking awesome, and I love them. Uh, the thing is, just Plus, don't you really... you got Rachel just McAdams. Don't... Can you complain exactly, about exa- a thing? Exactly. Just don't really think about the entire Sherlock Holmes lore, because that might not be entirely accurate, you know? I don't care about that. But they're fun fucking movies that I would want to put on at any time, because I love them. So, yeah. Sherlock Holmes by Guy Ritchie, Actually, because you know they're what? Okay, awesome. Okay, 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 okay. So, so, so stick with that for just two seconds. Favorite moment from that movie? Go. Uh, from the first one, let's just say. Uh, I the need boxing to think. scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. The boxing scene. Yeah, I mean, yeah. is it is it stupid that we see Sherlock Holmes in a in a underground boxing league? Well, yes, but it's awesome, and I love it. So. To be honest, those are my favorite books of all time, and he actually does do underground boxing. So, but yeah, no. it is it is silly for that. Well, okay, yes, and sure. actually, actually, one of my favorite moments is one of the more quiet moments in the film, which is uh, when Irene leaves him in the hotel room, and then the maid yes. comes in, and he's naked yes. on the bed, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> "What is the line that he says?" Oh, uh, so good, no, no, ma'am, ma'am. I just want to make this perfectly clear. Underneath the pillow is the key to my release. <laughs> I'm being 100 percent serious. I need you to reach under there. I need you to grab that key right now. What does she do? She just takes off running. Yeah. It's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah, hell yeah. I love it. Fuck God. Yeah. Exactly. No, that's a great pick, dude. Seriously, that's a fucking great pick. <laughs> I love those movies. Um, I do. So, and, and this is, uh, the, 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 for, for, my, for my first time I'll mention, uh, this is a movie that I grew up on. This is a movie that I loved when I was a kid. But I have to admit, it has not aged well at all. And it's fucking terrible. Even though it does have one of my favorite Aerosmith songs on it. I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep because I miss you, baby. And I don't want to miss a thing. He's from New Hampshire, by the way. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, mean, come on. It's like, okay. Yes. Now, I want to make it perfectly clear. Armageddon. Once uh, it actually gets into space, sure, it's very action heavy. It's 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 a lot of quote unquote fun. But for me, the best the best the best parts of the movie are everything up to them flying because the characters are so fun. Plus, when Harry is chasing around AJ with a shotgun after finding out he slept with his daughter, oh my god! <laughs> like AJ is like Harry, no, 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 wait, I love her. Damn wrong answer. Boom. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure it's the only Michael Bay movie with numbers in it, so that's a plus. <laughs> <laughs> no, good choice. 
<laughs> that's actually that's actually my buddy. That's like his second or third favorite movie of all time. Like he knows it's horrible, but he does not give a shit. Like he just unabashedly loves it, and I think that's amazing. So. Yes, and um, and okay. As much as uh, the three of us try not to talk about our past work, uh, there is a there is a there is a video out there of me crying to the scene <laughs> when Harry is talking to his daughter. If you find a certain commentary of Armageddon, you'll I, I'm wearing my shades and I'm crying my <laughs> eyes out because literally when Bruce Willis is saying goodbye to Liv Tyler for the last time, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> this hurts. So. Yes, um, Armageddon. I grew up on it, and J.J. Abrams doesn't get enough credit for actually throwing the few funny lines that do exist in the film. But yes, a dumb, dumb time if ever there was one. But I do enjoy it. And so, Ryan, what you got next, bro? So now it's my next honorable mention. Yes. Um. We're spending way too much time on these honorable mentions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll try to like right. come up with something quick. I guess for like shit, because I know like what I want my other ones to be. I don't know. I guess I don't watch enough stupid action movies, but I back in the day when it first came out, I honestly didn't hate or when they first came out, I didn't hate the G.I. Joe movies. So I'll just really quick say okay. they weren't the worst things ever. With Channing Tatum or yeah, both of them. The yeah. R- Rise of Cobra and Retaliation. Retaliation. I didn't hate them. I knew they were horrible. But real quick, just to say, I don't think they were horrible. Sienna Miller looked amazing in them. And just, yeah, they're cool. fun. And, 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 and mainly it is because I really did like G.I. Joe growing up. And I loved watching the cartoons and stuff like that. So that plays a part in it. But yeah, I thought they were serviceable. Okay, fair enough. Case. What you got next, bro? I will go to a movie and a franchise where the first one is regarded as an all-time classic, but I don't love it uh, because I wasn't introduced to the first one. I was introduced to this fourth one, Live Free or Die Hard. Ah. Yeah. Um, I actually quite like Live Free or Die Hard. It's it's a stupid, dumb movie for sure. Uh, But I... Yeah, like it, it has just a lot of good action tropes, a lot of just stupid fun shit that I just like, you know. And um, like I think the first Die Hard is good. It's very influential for what it did, but I just in the end don't care for it that much. I think that the movie has been perfected a million times after. Um, yes, I know that it, it, it was the one that made sure that every action movie ever in a confined space made sure that it worked. But every movie after that was, every action movie in a confined space that was made after Die Hard, I think is better. I'm sorry, I just don't really like the first Die Hard that much. I think it's a good movie, you know, but and like Hans Gruber is great. But other than that, it doesn't have anything standing out from it. And I think that the fourth one, well, that was the introduction to me. Timothy Oliphant is a great villain, I think. Um, there is a really, really, really hot girl in this that I, I can't <laughs> remember right now. Um, and, like, I just like the movie. It's a stupid thing. A stupid turn your brain off action movie, but I just like it, so that's why. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, and 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 that's fair. I mean, and <coughs> yes, and I'm and I think you also told me that Die Hard got a little overhyped for you, which kinda that. It, that I does, did see that, it at a pretty young age, you know. Die Hard, so uh, good. Not yeah. a Christmas movie. You guys are oh, dumb. No, no, no! It is a Christmas movie. It's no, a it's Christmas not a movie. Christmas movie. No, it's it not. Ryan, movie. it is a movie you that even, takes place. Do you place even place John McClane, bro? It, it is Iron Man Christmas. 3 Christmas, there's Christmas, tree? Christmas tree. There's a Christmas tree in the Nakatomi Plaza, and it ends with a Christmas song. It is in every way a Christmas fucking movie. Plus, Jeez. the themes are about <laughs> family. Yeah. It's, a, it's about a man who is just trying to get to L.A. to be yeah. with his family it for Christmas It was a fucking time. Christmas movie already. No. no. Anyway. <laughs> 
Anyway, but yes, it is the greatest action film of all time. But that's neither here nor there. No, it's my, not. Uh, my other guilty pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, Case. <laughs> actually, you know, here, here's the thing, Case. I know what you're gonna say is the greatest action film of all time, and I'll and I'll I'll meet you halfway. Terminator Two: no, Judgment I'm, I'm Day. Not mention, <gasps> I'm not. Fine. I'm not gonna mention that right now. Well, it, it, Terminator Two is not a dumb action movie. It's just a fucking amazing film. It is an amazing movie. Yes. But anyway, <laughs> so okay. My next honorable mention, and, I'll, and I promise I'll make this quick. Oh, no. Dwayne Johnson in his <laughs> first actual starring role. Not, you know, quick appearance in a little mummy film. Oh, you're saying the Scorpion wow. King? I'm saying the fucking Scorpion <laughs> King. I fucking <laughs> love this movie. Really? Oh, yeah. Dude, you got Michael Clark Duncan. Who's amazing. I knew there was a reason that Brandon Fraser was in the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course I was going to bring up this movie. And I'll be talking about The Mummy later on. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, like, here's the thing. Dwayne Johnson honestly gives a charismatic performance, which is why I, lo- you know, I-, I identify with him. And... Because I, a lot of my favorite characters in fiction are sort of the lone warriors who stand alone and fight the bad guy head on but because they're doing what is right. That's why I you know, identify with the character of Matthias the Scorpion King. I love the character. I love the story arc. And I know. It's so stupid. But man, do I love it. And plus, Bernard Hill. How can you go wrong with Bernard Hill as the, the old scientist? It's amazing. And if I've said it once, I'll say it a fucking thousand more times. I Stand Alone by Godsmack is the single greatest post credit song of any action movie. Come at me. So, yes. Scorpion King. I fucking love it. Ryan? I saw Godsmack live for the first time, like, literally a month ago. Yeah, and they played that obviously as their encore, and it was fucking awesome. Shine Down came on first. Shine Down's like, yes. But um, yeah, not a fan. Yeah, Breaking yeah. Ben all the way. But yeah, it was, Godsmack was great. That was a great show. They're getting old. They're a little old. But um, and, and, <laughs> and I'm looking at the chat real quick here. The cool guy is on your side, right? About Die Hard. And yeah. damn it, cool guy. I <laughs> liked you, and now I don't. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Jonathan Beck and the cool guy and everybody else in the chat, thank you for contributing. We love you. And seriously, like, Appreciate I, it. I cannot yeah. wait till the point where we have, like, hundreds of people in this <laughs> chat because, you know what? We're going to fucking get there. And I don't think it's going to take very long. <laughs> but let's get into our our, our, our big three we, we really want to talk about. Ryan, hit me. <sighs> Look, like I said, I don't watch a lot of dumb, like, quote-unquote, like, the the big dumb action movies that everyone watches. So I'm kind of just going to have to go off of some that I feel like have simpler plots. And it's like, okay, this isn't, like, super smart, inside-your-head action movie. So I'm going to go with The Guest with uh, Dan Stevens in it. It's a smaller movie with a pretty basic plot. I mean, not a lot happens in this movie. Okay. It's interesting. It's one one of the best thrillers I've seen in years. Yeah, and it is more of a thriller, too. So, good point on that. But, like, it's a basic as fuck plot. Like, really not. And, like, once it gets into. I don't want to spoil anything because I really genuinely think everyone should see this movie at least once. Once it gets into the end, it picks up some tropes. And this is why I put it on my list is like, it picks up some tropes as, like, all right, I've seen this before. Like, come on. But they work. Yes. <laughs> Damn if they don't work. So I'd say the guest. And two, if you like any sort of like Stranger Things, 80s-ish, synthesizer type music, this is the soundtrack for you, my boy. So yeah, the guest, Dan Stevens. And uh, Micah Monroe, too, who ended up being in the uh, a very, very dumb action movie, Independence Day Resurgence. Um, uh, ooh, yeah. Uh, like and, and his thing, I want her to keep getting work because between her work in the guest and it follows, she is yeah. fantastic. Oh, um, it follows, yes. If we were doing horror movies, still, I, I can't believe I missed the other week. Oh yeah, it follows is amazing. Well, you just had to miss it, didn't you? 
I'm just kidding. I'm, I, 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 I'm just kidding, Josh, man. But, no, uh, no, so so Case, hit me. What you got? Okay, this is a movie that probably both of you hate, and I don't give a shit. And this is the most stupid, big, dumb movie of this entire franchise. But I love it so much. It's Furious 7. Ah. The seventh Fast and the Furious okay. movie. Seriously, One of the like, two films in this franchise I actually kind of like. <laughs> hey, that's good. Because the thing is, Fast Five, most people will agree is the best. And yes, it is. But it's not as dumb and stupid and my- brainless as Furious 7. Furious 7 is my second favorite um, because it just goes all out. It, go- it goes every location in the world. It does every. It drops cars out of a fucking plane. There is no... There is literally no high concept in any shape, way, or form in this movie. Just besides cars doing awesome shit in an action movie, and it's awesome. And people will go watch it in the theater because this movie grossed 1.5 billion fucking dollars, and it's <laughs> awesome. And I love it. And it's fucking stupid, but I love it. And that's why I keep watching this franchise. And like Fury Seven is probably the most dumb stupid action movie out of this entire franchise that you can choose for it because it has so many stupid shit going on throughout the movie that i i just had to say it it's awesome i love it (laughs) (laughs) i I honestly i love how much you love this movie (laughs) it's awesome seriously like i i i'm somewhat envious of dropping out of it there are are cars dropping out of a plane it's awesome Like, no, dude, like, I, I, I'm actually genuinely a little envious of how much you love this movie. Like, I wish I could love this movie. Yes. But the thing <laughs> is, I just never cared about the franchise to begin with. Oh, and also, also Jason, Jason Statham versus Drain Rock Johnson. Dude. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. But um, I, I will say, sadly, as good intentioned as the, as the ending is, with Paul Walker driving off on on, oh, on, that, on that exit, that, like that's emotional. That that, really that's is. emotional. But if you put in any other song other than that stupid fucking, it's been a hard day without you, my friend. I'll tell you all about it when I see yeah, you okay, again. Okay, okay, may, may, maybe you just don't like the song. I don't. <laughs> I genuinely don't because no. and, no, don't. And, and like and and look. The scene I've actually seen some people do like their own emotional score to that scene. Boom, a million times better. And I was literally crying. By the way, by the way, I will tell you that uh, when I watched it the last time, I was doing a marathon of Fast and Furious movies with Rena, who definitely, my girlfriend, who definitely agrees, <laughs> this is a stupid franchise, all right? This is just stupid action movies. She cried during that scene. She thought it was a very powerful, emotional ending. So, hey, there are people who definitely disagree with you on that one. And look, guys, please, if, if if you disagree with me on that on that sentiment, let me know. And <laughs> let's let's talk about it because you know what? Maybe I am being a little too hard on that particular element. Maybe I should be a little more forgiving just because I don't like a certain song used for a sequence. But then again, it's just my fucking opinion. So This is true. <laughs> you know, if you got a problem with it. Let it go. Make like Frozen and let it go. <laughs> Make like Frozen. So now I'm going to bring up my, my the first of my big three. And this is a movie that I've adored for coming up on almost 17 years. I saw this movie way too fucking young, but I'm no apologies for it. Uh, my parents raised me on the good stuff. Desperado. Starring Antonio Banderas. Directed by Robert Rod- Rodriguez with Salma Hayek. And holy shit, this movie is fucking entertaining. Oh my god. Danny Trejo comes in as this really awesome, uh, you know, gangster ish, suave son of a bitch who throws knives and it's fucking awesome. And it's so simple. It's so simple. It's just the story of this guitar-playing mariachi who just can whip out Petitioner's guitar case into a machine gun, and it's fucking cool. 
Andy, you know, Antonio Banderas gives a great performance. I'm blanking on the name of the guy who plays the main villain, but he's fantastic. I love the subplot with the, the this little kid that Antonio uh, winds up sort of taking care of almost. It's intriguing. The romance between him and Salma Hayek is really good. But it's dumb as all hell. And I love it. Because it knows how to take itself just the right amount of seriously. It takes up to just the right amount. It's not too serious, but it's not too goofy. So, Desperado, if you haven't checked it out, I genuinely would recommend it to anybody to, to give it a watch. And El Mariachi, the first film in this trilogy, might not be your thing. And I'll be honest, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, I don't give a shit about. Just because, you know... This is a pre... But get through the shit, and you get through the third one, and it's good. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so, Desperado, my first my first pick. Ryan, what you got for me? Case kind of talked about it earlier, but I'm, I'm like going to take it to the next level because, yes, Men in Black, but I think that's more of like people genuinely accept Men in Black as being good. I got to yeah, skip over Men in Black... Great. Two because that's you can't accept Men in Black oh, Two at all. I but I will going. accept. Oh really? I know. I'm gonna going. accept Men in Black Black Three. Yes, I my Men man. I I didn't understand why yeah. people didn't like it. So call it a dumb action movie or dumb sci-fi action, whatever. Blah blah blah. <laughs> I thought it was cool. <laughs> like I liked it. And Josh Brolin. I mean, I don't know. It's just. <sighs> yeah. It just fit. Like, I remember seeing Men in Black on VHS when I was, like, eight years old. And the second Dang. one... No, seriously. The second one fucking sucks. But then they came out with the third one. Well, I don't even remember when it came out. And, like, I watched it, and I thought it was pretty good. All I've ever heard... I mean, maybe you guys think it's good or not. I don't know. But all I've ever heard is, like, this movie's horrible. It's just as bad as the second one. Like, why did they try to do this time travel stuff? I was like, I love the era that they went to and I thought it brought a lot of meaning to the uh oh sorry ladies and gentlemen looks like we've had a quick uh, quick loss of connection sorry guys give it one second give it one second to come back hold on we're gonna cut away for oh here we go sorry okay we're back we had technical difficulty, Ryan, as you were. Men in Black 1 and 3. Fuck Men in Black 2, except for the hot chick. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Well, okay, <laughs> I, actually, I actually want to say something about that, because uh, I am currently in the process of rewatching the Men in Black movies. Um, I saw the first Men in Black today. I love it. It's awesome. It's an all-time classic, I think, uh, even though it's only 20 years old. 21 uh but still like the first man in black that's not a dumb action movie that is a great fucking movie the first one some people I, say i okay some people but they're stupid so i don't give a shit uh, this the second the second <laughs> one i mean uh, the second one i'm yet to rewatch but as a kid i remember liking it i should probably rewatch it i know that johnny knoxville is in it <laughs> as a character um I'll, I'll just have to wait and see. And I don't remember the third one. I've only seen it once years ago, so I just don't. But I don't think that, like, uh, any of these movies are necessarily dumb, dumb, brainless action movies like the, like, well, at least not, at least not. I'd the, say they're pretty dumb. I, 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 I'll, no, 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 I'll, but I'll, the, I'll meet you the, halfway. First, the first one isn't. The second and third might be. Hey, I don't and, know. And, and, I, and again, I'll, 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 I still loved it, but I thought I'll, it was pretty. I'll, I'll meet. I'll meet you halfway. Where I'll say that the first one I think is, is corny but charming, because yes, it is so soaked in '90s. It's not even funny. It is so yeah. soaked in the in yeah. mid '90s. But that's part of its charm. Yeah. The fact that it's so dated it's a talking makes it dog appealing. That looks like shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> but again. 
it and Vincent D'Onofrio doing his thing. It's amazing, oh my God. but it's very cheesy. I, I guess it's maybe very... like that's my mistake is like equating cheesy with dumb. But which, I don't know. To which, me... which I mean, and 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 again. You know what? Again, because this is part one, we can get get more into this conversation at another yeah. time, and I will happily do that as <laughs> as this show continues to grow. But what I will say is, um, Man Black Three, even though I've seen the movie once, I remember it so fucking well. Yeah, it sticks with you. Yeah, I've seen it at least like three times. Which which is so weird because I I keep thinking oh, I'm gonna forget about this movie. But then all of a sudden, no, I just remember the scene with Michael Stuhlbarg as the weird, as, as the Griff, which yeah. I know. If you're yeah. Mark Ellis, you fucking hate that, and that's fair. Because it is kind of annoying, but it works for me at least. Plus, Andy Warhol is an undercover agent. Come on. Yeah. That is a brilliant <laughs> moment. That is brilliant. And then, um, you know, and there's, there's a scene on the beach at the end of the movie that yeah. I cried when I saw it in theaters. I genuinely uh-huh. cried. That's all the more I'm going to say about that. Um, but yeah, no, like, dude, Ryan, great pick. Seriously. I try. I try. Yeah. Case, what you got? The next one that I have, okay, th- this is essentially like any James Bond movie that you've ever seen, which thought was, which you thought was stupid and corny and whatnot. Oh. Um Yes, there are a lot of stupid, bad James Bond movies. There are a lot of great ones as well. I love the franchise overall. But probably the most stupid, dumb movie that they have with a lot of explosions and action scenes is Die Another Day. (laughs) Halle Berry is in this fucking movie. uh, Pierce Brosnan's last uh, attempt at a Bond movie. It is such a dumb movie. Um... I I literally don't give a shit. I like it. I like it a lot. I've seen it a lot when I was younger. Uh, I'm I actually need a rewatch, but I know that if even if I rewatch it, I will recognize the dumb factor of this movie. I still love it. Like uh, Die Another Day is such a stupid movie, but I love it so much. So yeah. Um, I I don't really know what else to say. This movie has it all. It has a lot of action sequences, explosions, uh, bad CG, especially early 2000 CG, um, a hot Halle Berry. I don't care what anyone says. She's oh, yeah. hot in this movie. I don't care what anyone says about any other movie, but she's hot in this movie. Uh, so, yeah, Die Another Day. That's an awesome, dumb action flick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was so bad that they had to reboot the entire franchise and take yep. a new direction. <laughs> they but, did. <laughs> but. <laughs> hey, but that gave us the best James Bond movie, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> in your professional opinion, in my, sir. In my opinion, yes. You know. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, it's fun. Personally, I, I, I do have a couple too many qualms to have too much fun with it, but I completely understand where people come from when they say, "Oh, it's this is this is my kind of dumb fun." Plus, I'm not one to talk because I'm going back to the Michael Bell, more to, Michael Bell, Michael Bay. Well, oh, for a little film Rock? from 1996 nice. called The Rock. Oh I, my! I almost yeah. had this on my list. <laughs> I almost put that too. Yeah, I, I fucking adore this movie. I mean, I really it do. is dumb, but, like, it's almost – it's one of those where it's hard because it's universally, I feel like, accepted as good. So, like, like it, yeah. yeah, it's well, dumb, yeah, and, and but it's like, loved. It's, like, it's competently made. Yeah. But it is so ridiculous at times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, when, oh, yeah. when, when Nicolas Cage sends Tony Todd out the window uh, saying, hey, you're the rocket man. De- you know, <laughs> like – there are so many moments that I, I I can't even count how many I love. Like seeing uh, Leo McGarry from the West Wing get his arm fucking snapped by James Bond. Like, that's that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, cool. that's a badass movie. That's awesome. um, but, of course, I, I can't talk about this movie without talking about one of my top ten favorite quotes of all time. I know what you're going to say. A loser complains about trying their best. A winner goes home and fucks the prom queen. Prom queen. Yes. My wife was the prom queen. This is one of the best 
dumb action movies I've ever seen. And oh my god, internet connection. Can we just work for two seconds, please? <sighs> Sorry guys, technical difficulties here. Once again. Uh oh. Okay. Connection's back. We're good. Okay. Technical difficulty is gone for right now. Hopefully. And that's good because we're going to give our last picks and then we're going to close out the show. I don't know. Yep. Yep. But yes. Thank you guys for appreciating my second pick. I appreciate all of you. Rock is and bad. Ah, the Rock is awesome. You'll, you'll def and you'll definitely appreciate my last pick. I can promise <laughs> you that. We'll but speaking see. of last picks, Ryan. I, I'm, I suddenly became afraid that maybe... No, nah, I don't think I can still use. But I do feel like you stole my thunder with '90s Nicolas Cage. Oh yeah, face off. No. <laughs> no. Con Air. Oh. <laughs> Put yes. the money down. Con my Air. Man. Oh. Yeah. I mean, Con like, Air. I, I, I'm, I'm not even mad. I'm not even mad because <laughs> Cyrus the Virus is one of the coolest '90s yeah. villains of all time. Ever. And then, uh, and then uh, Steve Buscemi, too. Like, come on, yes. man. Like, oh, worst Southern accent known to man. Come on, Nicolas Cage. I know you can do better than that. But it's it, it stands the test of time. Like, what is it about, yes, the 80s, but, like, we they really hit a peak in the 90s of just, like, dumb, fun action movies. And this is, like, gen like I don't usually like the quote-unquote dumb, fun action movies. So this is the most pure dumb fun action movie on my list, but that's because Con Air is one that I genuinely like. And I think if I had remembered The Rock, maybe that would have ended up on here, but I'm kind of glad it didn't, because Con Air. Like, Con Air, I don't know, it's just fun and and not particularly memorable for specific parts besides the one quote and then, yeah, uh, John Malkovich. But I don't know, it's just... I, I, the only way I've ever seen it, too, is on VHS... Because that's okay. what my family has. It's like on VHS. <laughs> so that just lends to the shittiness of it. I've never seen it in anything but VHS. But Actually, And we still have a VHS player, so I've seen it like literally a year ago on VHS. I don't know. It's just fun. A after the show, I, uh, I want you to remind me to send you a link to a, a very interesting video that sort of dissects Con Air from a very political standpoint. And I think... Uh, I think it might explain why you like it as much as you do. <laughs> like, I'm dead serious. Like, oh, fuck. Oh, like, shit. Well, no, no. I, I, and I, I don't mean to in an insulting way. Like, um, Cracked, back when they were making videos, one of their videos oh, yeah. actually broke down, like, how Con Air is essentially a conservative uh, fantasy. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's true. I think yeah. I've actually seen it. I love Cracked yeah, back in the day. Uh, I miss them. After yeah, I don't hours, know where they went. Back. No, I don't really well, they, they they lost money. They they apparently oh. made some bad investing decisions, and boom. Yeah, they had some pretty interesting videos. Yes, they did. Anyway, Case Cornelius, uh, what do you have for us? I will first of all say that I still need to fully watch Con Air. I have seen parts. Do yourself of it. A favor. I, I I've seen big parts of it on TV, and I already thought, yeah, no, that's a dumb action movie. Uh, but who am I to talk when my number one favorite dumb action movie is Lara Croft Tomb Raider with no! Angelina Jolie? Yes! yes. I, love I love this movie so much. I have loved it since the first time that I saw it. And yes, I was a teenager with the heart for Angelina Jolie back in the day. Yeah, we all because, were. Come on. Have you seen Angelina Jolie me. in the fucking shower in this movie? Oh my fucking god. That like, doesn't save the movie. Dude, it, it's just like... It kind of does. <laughs> it, it's not, no, no. Here, the thing is... Um, yeah, that's one of the very first scene of the, uh, scenes of this movie. And the actual first scene is her shooting at a robot. If you think about that for two seconds, your mind would explode. Like, you can't kill it. What the, the, uh, just don't think about it. Just drink your beer, enjoy the movie, pop, uh, 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 cram, 
popcorn in your face while while watching this movie because it's Angelina Jolie who actually pulls a convincing uh, Lara Croft even though his uh, her English accent is terrible. Speaking of terrible accents, she's not the worst accent in this movie. That's Daniel Craig trying Daniel to pull up <laughs> trying to pull up a fucking American accent, which is way worse, but it's so awesome. They're like, oh my god, I love this movie so much. The CG is horrible. Some of the accents are terrible. The slow acting shots, is, awful. The, yeah, slow mo shots are awful. The acting is decent, I'd say. I actually love that Sir Jorah from Game of Thrones is the main villain of this movie. And yes. that's, that's, yeah, just that's what awesome. we're talking about. That. Yeah, he is. He is wow, the awesome. Villain. <laughs> that's that's wow. amazing. Um, and just like this, this movie is so over the top and campy, and just switch your brain off from the first moment you start watching this movie and but until the movie is finished. But if you do that, you will love this movie. It is awesome. It is stupid, and I love it. And I've loved it ever since I was young. <laughs> So, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Shit. Now, before, I, like before I get my last one, um, I, I do want to read a couple from the chat. Yeah. Uh, the cool guy uh, actually says that Central Intelligence is an act, you know, a dumb action comedy. He really that enjoys. Was fun. It. Hey, that, that's that a was fun, fun movie. That's a very fun movie. And Jonathan Peck uh, brought up uh, Jurassic World, which yes, yeah, uh, I, I was genuinely. I love that movie. It. I, I, I love, love that, movie. that movie. I was genuinely, genuinely <laughs> considering it, but I just, I, I couldn't. Bring uh, yeah, I don't know. I list. think it's more survival than action, but it's still really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jurassic World is not necessarily. It's like a disaster action. movie. Yeah. yeah. And 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 also Pacific Rim, which. <gasps> uh, Holy fuck! Why did I, I forget I, that? I consider I was more a big fantasy fan. sci-fi than I no. do action. No, I also wasn't uh, a big fan of Pacific Rim to be fair. Oh. Which neither was I. Fuck, yeah, I would have included that. Whoever said that, you're a genius. Jonathan Peck. Jonathan Peck, uh, Ryan, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan likes you a lot. Yes. So, we're going to come on to, to my last one. In case, yes, you did already uh, think that Ryan was going to say this, but I'm going to fucking say it. Face off, motherfucker! <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me do it correctly. Face <laughs> off. <laughs> This is by far the dumbest premise of all time. A cop does a face transplant with a heavily wanted criminal just to get information. But oh my god, this movie. Two of the worst performances ever recorded on film ever. By the way, didn't the Clone Wars use this in one of their arcs? They did. That's amazing. But yeah, now here's the thing, Ryan. You could argue it's one of the worst, two or two of the worst performances. Two of the worst. But I'll argue it's two of the best because yeah. they're intentionally <laughs> acting like the other person. Like, like Nicolas Cage had to act like John Travolta acted like Nicolas Cage. Yeah. And then John Travolta had to act like Nicolas Cage acted like John Travolta. To me, <laughs> like that is fucking fascinating. True. Plus, yeah. in my opinion, it has John Woo's signature dove scene done at its most perfect moment when Nicolas Cage is standing there in the church and in walks John Travolta with the doves flying across the screen as a heavenly choir sings in the background. And it is glorious. This film has some of the best gunfights I've ever seen in a movie. This film has one of the dumbest boat chases I've ever seen that's still fucking awesome. And yes, you know what, Ryan? In a way, it is some of the worst acting I've ever seen in a movie ever. <laughs> it's like yes, it looking, is. It's You're like right, it is. a mirror, only not. <laughs> By the way, is, it, is this Razzie level? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In some ways, yes, but in other ways, no. Because Honestly, it's, it, it makes up for how stupid it is with how glorious it is. So that's I mean, where it makes classic, the difference. That's for sure. It's a classic, but I think for a lot of the wrong reasons. But yes. for part two, we might just have to do best John Woo action movie. Oh, of God. I sincerely, I sincerely regret not putting Mission Impossible 2 on my list. I mean, that's awful. That's, that's a bad movie. The first movie. Mission Impossible movie, but I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Yes. Bro. No, definitely, Bro. definitely. 
when we Mission, Impo- Mission we, Impossible we, we, Two, when, when we revisit this topic, when we do a part two, <laughs> I'm going to rant about that. I'm shit. gonna Fuck. join you on that rant, sir. <laughs> it is gonna be a wonderful time. It's gonna, in the words of the Joker from 1989's Batman, it's gonna be a hot time in the old town tonight. <laughs> so, okay, yes. Bottom line, we're all fucking drunk. We're talking about action movies. <laughs> And I think what, it's signed. What to... else are you expecting from this fucking show? <laughs> exactly. And and, you know what? and Jonathan Peck, you brought up a fucking fantastic point to kind of close this out. Whether or not you like Face Off, it is a critically acclaimed film. It is at ninety-two yeah. fucking percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like an anomaly. It's unbelievable, and it's not able to be understood why people Okay, so it. so fucking Face Off is at 92%, but Saw is at 49%. This this is fucking horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, yeah, I, I'm just done. <laughs> oh, well, to be fair, Friday the 13th Part 1 is at 61%, and that's way too fucking high. It should be in the mid-20s at best, but... Also, I have just one word to say, and then I'll Please. let you close this out however you want. Swordfish. Oh God! <laughs> speaking of John Travolta, yeah, but I mean, well, let's say yeah. Speaking of over the top, John Travolta and then Hugh Jackman. Uh, John okay. Travolta, Halle Berry, and Hugh Jackman. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yes, Halle Berry and her five hundred thousand dollar tits. I shit you I'm not. In. She charged literally two hundred fifty thousand dollars per boob per- that she showed on screen. Per boob. Look that up. True, per- true, true fact. <laughs> As guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Who Cares Anyway podcast. If you like it, please give it a like, comment, subscribe, and share a link to all the social media, to Twitter, to Facebook, and like our like our shit. And I'll I'll I'll, I'll finish all the plugs later. Oh, Ryan, shit. I like it. <laughs> Ryan, where can the good folks find you online, sir? You can find me on Twitter at Clan McClellan. That's Clan M C L E L L A N. And yeah, like our shit. Come back. Let me know if you think the Red Sox are going to win the World Series or not. I'm actually genuinely interested to hear. I hate to burst your bubble, but they're probably not going to. But best of luck. 2 0, oh, bitch! What's the score right now? I'm about to look. <laughs> you never know. In case, where can the good folks find you online? Uh, people can find me uh, with my mind blown that fucking face off is 92% on Rotten Tomatoes compared to other movies ha- that have w- a way lower score that deserve a way higher score because what the fuck Rotten Tomatoes piece of shit critics what the fuck are you guys doing this makes no fucking sense anyway, if you ever wanted to argue for like, Rotten Tomatoes being shitty as fuck uh, yeah Rotten Tomatoes is so extremely fucking flawed anyway you can find me at Dutch Movie Guy on Twitter and Case Cornelius on Facebook if you can figure out how to spell that um, and still me pondering over the fact that how the fuck did they get 92% that makes no fucking sense also check out our reaction tomorrow or in a few hours or whenever it drops absolutely <laughs> Stay tuned for our Schmodown reaction dropping tomorrow morning. Stay tuned for our Star Wars Resistance recap coming on Monday. And as always, you guys can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Stardust, at Skywalker Roman. You guys can follow this very channel on Twitter and Instagram, at D2A channel. Please like our Facebook page. And you can see that he's a badass because he has sunglasses and a beanie. Absolutely. <laughs> and you guys can follow my band, Silver Nightfall, everywhere on social media, at Silver Nightfall. For Ryan McClellan and for Case Cornelisa, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Take care!